Hi, I'm Michael Pfeiffer from Industrial Metallurgists. In this video, I'll explain about metal microstructure. Metal microstructure is important to understand because the properties of a metal depend on the metal microstructure. And there are different things we can do to a metal to modify and engineer a metal's microstructure in order to obtain specific properties. And also by understanding microstructure, we can better understand how to solve problems because we can look at a microstructure and determine whether a metal doesn't have the right composition or perhaps hasn't been processed in the proper way. So in this video, I'll take you through some examples of different types of metal microstructures. So there are various aspects of a metal microstructure that are important to us. There's the arrangement of atoms, there's the dislocations of metals, there are grains, and also metallurgical phases that are present in metals. And these various microstructure features influence the properties of metals. So the importance of microstructure is that we can engineer the microstructure to obtain desired properties. So the microstructure of a metal has a direct influence on the properties of a metal. And we can influence the microstructure of a metal through its composition by adding uh, different alloying elements to a particular element and by using different manufacturing processes. This includes mechanical treatments such as cold working or hot rolling or extrusion and also thermal treatment, such as various heat treating processes. And also, I guess, hot treating or hot rolling is also a form of thermal treatment. These manufacturing processes influence the microstructure, which influences the properties of metals. So by understanding the factors that influence microstructure, we can engineer the microstructure to obtain the desired properties for a particular application. And again, this involves using alloying and processing. So we have a variety of techniques that are available to us to observe the microstructure of a metal. So observing the microstructure re requires using magnifications of, of 25x or higher. Typically, we're using an optical microscope. It's a light microscope that has mag that's capable of magnifications from between about 50 times magnification up to about 1,500 times magnification. And special sample preparation methods are used to prepare a sample. This uh, this figure image shows um, some samples that were encapsulated in the plastic material and then the surface is, is, is ground and polished and then etched to reveal the microstructure features of interest. And then this shows a sample being examined with a microscope and the microstructure is being displayed on the screen. So the sample is, is, is encapsulated in the plastic material, it then goes through different preparation steps and then we observe it with a microscope. The etching that's used is used to reveal various features in the microstructure. So this shows a, the, the image on the left shows a sample before etching. And this is at maybe like 50 times magnification. And the sample on the right shows a, a, an image of a sample after it, it has been etched. Various chemicals are used for etching. The chemicals that are used depends on, on the particular metal and also on the features that we're interested in seeing. With, with, with a, an optical microscope, we are able to see grains and also phases inside of a metal. And here are some examples of, of, of microstructures for some common metals. So the sample on the left is a microstructure for a hot rolled carbon steel. Um, we see uh, the, the ferrite, which is a light colored phase, and the dark colored phase is uh, cementite, and it's in the form of cementite plates. Just looking at this microstructure gives information about how the material is processed and also gives a, a, some information about the composition of the material. It helps us understand it's a steel, that it's probably a medium carbon steel, and that it has, it has gone through um, a hot rolling operation. The sample on the right is an aluminum copper alloy that has been through a series of heat treating processes to form very small particles. These very small dark particles are called precipitates. Um, it's an aluminum copper uh, particle, and those particles strengthen the alloy. So by looking at this, the, uh, the sample, we can tell that the material has been heat, has been uh, precipitation strengthened. Um, we can't tell what kind of alloy it is, but we can tell that it has gone through a certain heat treating process. Uh, the sample on the left here shows a leaded brass. You see grains of, of, of the, the grains in the brass. And the particles, the gray particles, are lead. Um, lead is added to brass to improve its machinability. Um, other features might be 
also present in the alloy or in, in the micrographs. We might see um, phases at the grain boundary that might weaken the material or other features that can indicate that there are problems with the alloy. In this case, there is nothing here to indicate a problem in this leaded brass. The image on the right is, the, um, is a, uh, a weld joint in um, carbon steel that was welded together. Um, and looking at, at the micrograph helps us understand whether the part was welded properly and also gives us some sense about the, the composition of the alloy. The be, being able to under, uh, relate the, the microstructure to properties is important and understanding the factors that influence the microstructure and the resulting properties is important. So for steel, um, this table shows the amount of carbon present in the steel and the different microstructures in the steel. And we can look at the microstructure to verify that it has the proper microstructure and evaluate the strength to verify it has the right strength. But just based on the microstructure and based on the composition, we can get a sense of what the, what the expected strength will be in the material. The, the reason for showing this is just to illustrate that by, by understanding and getting the desired microstructure for a particular alloy composition, we can engineer a material to have the desired strength. So this, the image on the, uh, the top image shows a steel that's been hot rolled. It consists of ferrite and cementite. There are grains of ferrite in these regions of what's called perlite. Um, perlite is just plates of cementite with ferrite in between. And at two tenths percent carbon, it has a yield strength of 52 KSI. The, steel, the same steel can be heat treated through a, what's called the quenching and tempering process to form the phases called martensite. And a metallurgist can look at this and say, okay, I, I distinguish between the steel that has ferrite and cementite and the steel that has martensite and understand how the material has been, has been heat treated and how it's been processed. Well, the steel that consists of martensite has a much higher yield strength. And then as carbon content increases, the strengths for the different microstructures increase. So this gives us, inf this indicates that we can select different alloys and select different processing to obtain desired strength. So this helps us understand how we can engineer metals in order to get desired properties. And the final uh, example of a microstructure is, a, um, is a, a brass alloy that's been cold rolled and annealed. The sample on the left has been cold rolled and you can see the grains are elongated in the rolling direction so that we can, so just by looking at this sample, we know it's been cold rolled. We don't even need to know ahead of time it's been cold rolled. So the microstructure gives us a lot of information. And the beauty about metals is that if we ask them the right questions, they will give us, they will give us the answers and, and the metals won't lie to us. So just by looking at this image, we can say the metal has been cold rolled. And the cold rolling resulted in an 80 KSI yield strength. The same sample, the same metal was, was cold rolled and then it was annealed at 1,022 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour. And what we see happen is that new grains formed inside of the metal. And the result was a, a, a big reduction in the yield strength of the material. A similar sample was also cold rolled and annealed at a higher temperature and got even larger grains. Um, so by looking at the different microstructures, a metallurgist would understand the, what the material has been exposed to um, and, uh, and have a sense of, of, of how the material has been processed. And again, we can use this information and understanding of microstructure and properties to understand how to, how to engineer a metal. And we can also use our, our knowledge of microstructure to evaluate a sample to understand whether it has been processed properly in order to, to get the desired properties. And we can also look at the microstructure of a material that's, let's say, that where there's a quality problem or where component has failed during use and look at the microstructure and understand whether there has been a, a problem in processing the material and that may have resulted in a problem with the microstructure that resulted in the quality problem or in the failure. So eva microstructure evaluation and understanding microstructure is very powerful for, for uh, engineering to design products as well as for solving quality problems and component failures. Electron microscopes are also sometimes used to evaluate microstructure, though for most practical applications, most engineering applications were in, in industry, 
we're not using the scanning electron microscope or transmission electron microscope for evaluating microstructure. We're using the light microscope. But in any case, the, the electron microscopes have magnifications up to about 100,000 times magnification. And they, these, these uh, instruments use a beam of electrons to image the sample's surface. Another microstructure feature that's important that we don't often don't talk about during uh, when we're evaluating uh, engineering samples from industry is dislocations. Dislocations are important because they influence metal's strength. A, a dislocation, one example of a dislocation is when you have an extra plane of atoms inserted between two planes of atoms. And dislocations are present in all metals. Um, and this is an electron microscope image of dislocations. These dark lines are dislocations. The people who are studying dislocations are people typically at, at universities and people who are doing research. Also, crystal structure and evaluating crystal structure is important. Um, this is also might be something that's done at universities and academic in institutions and for research. And we use a, an X-ray diffractometer to characterize the arrangement of atoms inside of metals. So metals can have different arrangements of atoms. Some examples are like body center cubic, face center cubic, and hexagonal. Um, and this is used to understand the effects of processing on metals and the, uh, um, the, the, the behavior of metals during use. Um, so th that's what I have for you in this video for microstructure. If you're interested in learning more about microstructure and metallurgy, you'll be able to better under, be able to make better engineering decisions, have better discussions with, with customers and suppliers and other engineers, and also with metallurgy labs, and also be able to solve problems faster. We have a variety of courses, videos, and podcasts and articles that, that discuss metallurgy. You can go to our website and learn more. Our website is at www.imetllc.com to see all the courses, videos, and articles that we have to offer to help non-metallurgists learn metallurgy. If you have questions or comments, feel free to, to email or, or call. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your metals. Bye.